All right, let's welcome everybody to yet again another exciting edition of the Madiba official show. It's a review of Ghana's game that they played against Uruguay. The game ended with Ghana losing the game by two goals. So Neil can't get to Georgia and the Araskaita. He scored the two goals for the Uruguay and the Ghana. Pretty even proof the consolation that okay you have with me. Ivan Dennis Oko. We are going to review the game that was played earlier. So my brother, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, brother. I believe you enjoyed the match yourself. For me, over here, I didn't enjoy the game that much. The Uruguay race. That's what we are about to do. We're going to look at how you saw it in the game from our perspective. So no matter from your perspective, how will you sum the game up? Well, I think Ghana started well based on the, the necessities of the game. It was based on, it was important for Ghana to get a good result in this game. So they started well in the first 10 minutes. Ghana, even though they didn't create chances, but you could see them trying to get the result that they wanted in the game. They don't change that time you guys for their face. But even before their first goal, we had a penalty. And I think if we had scored that penalty, it would have gone in favor of Ghana, but we could not score. So you guys came over, they took off, they took on the game, tried to create some chances, and all of a sudden they got their first goal. When Ghana gets uh, a goal against them, that is where the problem is. In this tournament, in the previous two games that we played, in the first game against Portugal, we considered two goals in the first two minutes. The second game, we considered two goals in, a, in, a, in, in three minutes. So they knew that whenever we concede, we struggle to get back into the game. So they find a way to then hit us again. And that was the reason why we struggled in the early stages of the game. Now, even when we considered and you expected the team to come all out and then try to compete, we were struggling to have the ball and we were not pressing. So the first half, if you are to if you are to sum up the first half in the good or bad or the average situation, I would say it was a bad situation for Ghana. Now you move to the second half. Yes, we know that whenever teams concede and they come into the second half, they try to show something in the first 10-15 minutes of the game. We did that, but with the changes that we made, it was okay. But when you make changes and the opponent know some of these things, you will definitely struggle. Now you guys knew that any time that a team concedes and then they have to start a second half in trying to make a comeback, the team will definitely use the first 15-20 minutes of the game to show something. We did that but it didn't work because you guys are an experienced team, they've got experienced players in their setup. So it was not gonna work. Now after that happened, how we allowed you guys to play the game again rather than we who were chasing the game was where my problem is. Now you know that you are down by two goals nil. You, know. you have got the moment where you want to make a comeback. In making comebacks, you have to be consistent. That is the most important thing. If you are not consistent with your play, it wouldn't work. And that's what happened in the second half. Getting to the closing stage of the second half, on the pitch, the Uruguay fans and then the players who were on the bench knew that they were not going to qualify because Korea were leading by two goals to one against Portugal. Now that was the perfect moment for us to try and then get a goal and push them to the wall because at that moment if we had gotten a goal Korea would have been psychologically affected because they were chasing for two goals and now you have reduced their, their lead to one maybe we could have gotten a second goal but the players relaxed and they were still chasing the ball to a certain point that I even saw the goalkeeper delay in the game now when you delay in the game like that you are definitely going to struggle and that's what Ghana did in the second half so for me, this game even sums up all that we've tried to do in the tournament. We defended in the first two games against Portugal. We were not the usual Ghana, the Brazilians of Africa, the, all the accolades were done with them. We defended and we got a few goals. Where we even wanted a third goal, I didn't win. Against South Korea, whom many believe, aside Ghana, the weakest teams in the group, we were not really flamboyant in attack. It was always to lose and no one else. Now look at the goals that we scored against South Korea. For the first goal, a set piece. Or a cross. Second goal, a cross. Third goal, a cross again. It is good to have crosses. You scoring goals from crosses. But how many times do you see Ghana working out goals to score? Like what we witnessed against Uruguay today. The second goal by Arisketa. Clearly went goal from Suarez and then to Arisketa. So, in this tournament, we've shown that we are still a young team that is building. Because if you check the setup of the team, it is only the guy who has played at the World Cup. And Jordan are you. What about the rest of the players? None of them have played at the World Cup. 
we have about seven players who are new in the team. And then playing at this crucial moment. Because if we have had them before they qualify, right now, you know how to use players like Denai Williams. You know how to use Daniel Kovice. You know how to use um, Abdul Sam and Salis. You know how to use Osman Bukari. I, 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 to cut you short, you mentioned Inak Williams. Mm -hmm. How do you sum up his performance in the tournament in the title? Yeah, yeah. Honestly speaking, honestly speaking, if Inak Williams looks at the tournament, he himself will be very disappointed in what he did at the, at the tournament. First two games, no shots. I'm not talking about shot on, shot on target. No shots at all. Even off target. Off target. Even no shots. He had none. They gave him one assist, and even that one assist that they gave, Guinness will question that because it was an attempt to score where he missed, but because he touched the ball a bit, he fell to Kudus and then he He kicked the air. As I let me let's describe that goal. The third goal that Kudus scored against South Korea. Yeah. That was the one that he was giving the assist for. Exactly. But clearly, when the cross came in, he wanted to score himself, and he ended up kicking the air. Yeah. But he had a slight touch of the ball that eventually led to the path of Kudus, who eventually scored for Ghana. So as we said, that ball should have been an assist. Now let's move on. Otuado. Today, clearly we saw Diego Alonso changing some things. As we said, when we ran the comment, he took off Joe Godin. We all thought with experience he would have played this game. The in came Sebastian Quartes, the partner Jose Mara Hernandez. So we saw the coach's hand in the play of Uruguay today. How will you sum up our coach Otuado in the game against Uruguay? You see. In life, you need experiences. Yes, you need experiences in life. You look at Diego Alfonso. He's coach Inter Miami. He's coach Pachuca to win the CONCACAF Champions League. So, per pedigree, Pachuca played in the Club World Cup. Aside that, who is Otuado in the system? He's a new coach. He's a trainer scout who's been promoted by us because he's one of our own to be our national team coach. Per that point alone, he does not match up to what the coach that he faced in the tournament. Look at what Fernando Santos did to him. Look at what Diego Alonso has, uh, Diego, Diego Alonso has done to him. Even Paulo Bento, nearly, just nearly. Because I, I, I bet you, if it was South Korea that was leading 2-0, even if Ghana will make a, a, a comeback, it will not be through those two goals that they scored. Those two goals were yeah, similar goals. Same play, crossing, and a striker just put them. And, 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 that, and, and that's where coaching comes in. Aside that too, you look at Otuado and how he managed himself on the bench. Antics are part of coaching. You've seen Jose Mourinho, you've seen Pep Guardiola, shaking clubs and the likes on the bench. You need motivation. Try to tell us that coaches don't yell. Coaches don't yell, but sometimes yell. There are several examples. There's a book by Angelotti. Which maybe I'll send you the, the PDF so you read. At a certain point, Madini said that was the only time he got furious with them. Yeah. When he got furious with them, <laughs> the action that he gave them was good enough for the full season. You know you are playing a crucial game against you, but that is the team moment. There's no other moment. You are a coach who is an intern. You are like an intern in an institution. So if you are given a job as an intern, what do you do? You try to kill it because. It gets to a point where we know that because of inexperience, you cannot do it. But in this case, we can't talk about inexperience. In some cases, we talk about that. But in this performance, where you need a draw to qualify, but what did they do? But we, we can't call for his head that much. Yeah, Ivan, for the sake of time, let's sum up and mm -hmm. in about 10 seconds or a minute. Mm -hmm. Now we are out of the World Cup. The way forward. What do you think should be? That, like the way what we do going for there are positives in every tournament or in every team yes. in our team we know there are a lot of young lads there are a lot, a lot of young lads that we did not even call in the center it is time for the old guard to we start to think about replacing the old guards which is one number two it is time that we need to think of either making Otuado our permanent coach I'm not calling for a sack either we make Otuado our permanent coach or we decide to give the, the job to Chris Hilton or we go for another coach outside, maybe Heather Renard, maybe any other coach. That would be the only uh, the only way to solve this situation. Yes, we have a good team. Yes, we've been able to acquire some good talent from other countries into our team. We can still rebuild. There's the uh, uh, 
the Côte d'Ivoire 2024. Yeah, 2024 for us to play. Work out with exactly. So 2024 for us to play. So definitely, we can build something gradually. So these two things are the positive. That's the way forward. But to some of some of Ghana's World Cup, we were sixtieth in the rankings. We sent an intern coach. We are a new team, and we are the only team of one of the teams that had only two players playing from the previous World Cup. So that is enough to tell us that we had to lower expectations. And for me, I lowered mine. I don't know about other people, but on radio, on TV, on all the newspapers, on the blogs, the talk from most journalists was lower expectations. And that's what we witnessed. All right, so this way time will permit us for today's show. And it was a review of Ghana's game against Uruguay. Thanks. And if you are a new subscriber, please kindly click on that subscribe button. And if you are an old one, for that you can tell that we really appreciate each and every one of you for wasting your time and data to watch our videos. Gracias. I'm the Merci. Okay.